Cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are typically grouped into three categories, which is reflected, stored, and DOM-based. There is a little bit of overlap between the categories, but I'm just going to talk through each one separately just to give an introduction. The first then is reflected. And an example attack would be, let's say we've got a web application with a search functionality and an attacker is able to put an XSS payload into that search bar. The payload goes to the server, it's reflected by the server and arrives back in the browser where it's rendered. So that XSS payload triggers whenever it's rendered in the browser. So this means that the attacker could potentially craft a URL with a payload in that search query parameter and just send that to a victim. And whenever they click on that link, that search parameter, i.e. the XSS payload, is going to go to the server. It'll be reflected back to the victim and cause the JavaScript to trigger. So it might steal their cookie or do something like that. A stored XSS is quite similar, so it's still reflected from the server, but it's also stored. So let's say we've got a forum where a user is able to inject a XSS payload as a forum post or as a comment. And that means that every time somebody goes to view that page or that post, that XSS is going to trigger. So it's stored on the database, it's stored on the server, and it'll be reflected each time a victim accesses the page. And finally, a DOM-based XSS occurs entirely within the browser, so it's not reflected from the web server. It's not stored on the web server. In fact, the XSS payload will never actually make it to the web server. In today's video, we're going to look at a DOM XSS in jQuery Selector Sync using the hash change event. I'm going to go through a little bit more background information about DOM XSS and the specific challenge that we're going to look at. So if you know all that stuff already, you can just jump straight to the challenge in the chapters in the video. If not, let's go and take a look at the background. Most of this background information came from Portsmouth's Web Security Academy. I tried to shorten it and just restructure a little bit. So if there's anything missing or you want a more detailed explanation, go and check out the learning materials in the Portsmouth Web Security Academy. Anyway, let's start off with what is the DOM? The document object model is the web browser's hierarchical representation of the elements on the page. Websites can use JavaScript to manipulate the nodes and objects of the DOM as well as their properties. DOM-based vulnerabilities arise when a website contains JavaScript that takes an attacker controllable value, i.e. the source, and passes it to a dangerous function, i.e. the sync. And there's a list of commonly exploited sources and syncs here. You can see that's just linking directly to Portswigger's Web Security Academy. Next up, what is DOM XSS? So we talked about this a little bit at the start, but DOM XSS vulnerabilities usually arise when the JavaScript takes data from an attacker controllable source, such as a URL, and passes it to a sync that supports dynamic code execution, for example, eval or inner HTML. The most common source for DOM XSS is the URL, which is typically accessed with a window.location object. So let me hit F12 and let me clear out all this annoying all these annoying error messages. And we can just go and have a look and see what these are actually pointing to. So let's see what the window.location looks like. And if we do that, we'll see that it's just the URL that we have at the top. We could also play around with, let's say, eval as well. Let's do eval. And let's say alerts document.domain. You see that pops up with github.com. So if there was an eval on the page and we were able to inject something as an attacker into this sync, so the source is the data that we would control and the sync will be the dangerous function. If we were able to inject that alert in there, we'd be able to make this pop up on the victim system. Testing HTML syncs. So we can place a random alphanumeric string into a source, for example, location.search, and then use dev tools. Note that it shouldn't be view source. If we try to just view the source code, it won't account for any dynamic changes to the HTML. And we want to use the dev tools to inspect the HTML and find out where our string appears. For each location where the string appears in the DOM, you need to identify the context and refine input accordingly. For example, if the string appears within a double quoted attribute, try to inject double quotes and see if you can break out of that. And let's have a look again at another example. So that one was location.search. If we do location dot, you see it comes up with the various properties. Let's have a look at search and it's currently empty. So if we go up here and change this, let's do a question mark. I'm going to say this is a query and let's say 
You could say search here. You could say anything. Let's say query equals test. It's going to reload the page and we'll clear that again. And again, we'll do location dot search. And this time you see that that's actually pointing to the question mark query equals test. So if this was appearing somewhere on the page, maybe in an eval function like we just looked at, then we know that whatever we put into this query and after this question mark is going to be injected into that eval statement and hopefully execute testing JavaScript execution syncs isn't as straightforward because the input doesn't necessarily appear within the DOM, so we can't search for it. And instead we'll need to use a JavaScript debugger to determine whether and how the input is sent to a sync. So we can use F12 again, we can go to the debugger and we can select whatever JavaScript code we want from here. There used to be a little icon down here to pretty print, which I'm not seeing anymore. I'm not sure. It looks like it was kind of automatically done on a couple of those examples. Like this one's already pretty printing. Um, so maybe they just have that set to automatically pretty print now. I'm not too sure. If somebody knows, they can let me know. Anyway, if the source gets assigned to other variables, you'll need to track the variables and see how they're passed to the sync. So whenever we're using the debugger, we can basically go and try set set up some breakpoints. You see, if we just click on the line, that's going to set up a breakpoint so that every time this line is reached, every time it's going to be executed, it'll pause the execution and then we can step through, uh, we can step over, we can step in to basically debug the code line by line. When you find a sync that's being assigned data originating from the source, you can inspect the value in the debugger before it's sent to the sync. Like HTML syncs, you'll need to refine the input to see if you can deliver a successful XSS attack. The location.hash property is going to be important for this example, as was indicated in the title. So we can see here the hash property of the location interface returns a string containing the hash symbol, followed by the fragment identifier of the URL, the ID on the page. The fragment is not percent decoded. If the URL does not have a fragment identifier, the property contains an empty string. So Let's go and try that out again. Let's do location.hash and look at that, it's empty. But if we go back up here and instead of using a question mark to indicate the query, let's change that to a hash and let's say test again. Reload the page and now, oh, I accidentally clicked on one of the errors. Okay, uh, let's clear all of that. Oh, I still had this debugger thing on as well. Okay, so just disable that because that's pause the execution. Hit play, let me go back. Let's do clear and let's do location dot hash. And you'll see now it contains hash test. So that's cool. This can essentially be used in the code as we'll see in a second. So DOM XSS in jQuery, the hash change event. This is very important for the challenge we're about to look at. So let's have a read through this. A potential sync to look out for is jQuery's selector function, which looks like this, which can be used to inject malicious objects into the DOM. The selector is often used in conjunction with the location.hash source for animations or auto-scrolling to a particular element on the page. This behavior was often implemented using a vulnerable hash change event handler, for example. And we've got this code here, so you can see here it's waiting for the, we've got a, an event listener which is saying on the window, whenever the hash changes, so whatever the value in this hash, after this hash changes, it wants to execute this code, which is gonna say, create this element, and the element should be equal to the location.hash, the selector. So essentially what this is gonna do, it's gonna look through the page, and it's gonna try to select a value which has the same value as the location.hash. So let's say I submit a test here, and there was a tag or a string on the page called test. This would essentially try to select that and return it into the element variable. And then it'll scroll into view. So it's, if there was a test heading or something like this on the page and this code executed, it would automatically scroll the user to that test heading. Now an attacker could exploit this user controllable hash to inject XSS into the selector sync. And it mentions here that recent versions of jQuery have patched this specific vulnerability by, by preventing the injection of HTML into selector when the input begins with a hash character. 
So in order to exploit it, attackers must find a way to trigger a hash change event without user interaction, for example, an iframe. And in the example below, the source points to the vulnerable page with an empty hash value. When the iframe is loaded, an XSS is appended to the hash, triggering the hash change event. So we've got an iframe here, and essentially the iframe is set to vulnerablewebsite.com hash. And whenever the page loads, whenever the iframe loads, you have this event handler, which is going to trigger off and say, set this dot source to equal, well, it's going to append plus equals. So it's going to say that this dot source should be equal to vulnerablewebsite.com hash plus, and then this XSS payload, which is going to trigger an alert. It's going to trigger an alert because it's trying to load an image from one. And one isn't a valid source for an image. It needs to be a website or somewhere actually containing an image. So it's going to trigger off this alert. Okay, with the background info out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. It's called DOM XSS in jQuery select to sync using a hash change event. And the description tells us that we've got a DOM based cross site scripting vulnerability on the home page. It uses jQuery's selector function to auto scroll to a given post whose title is passed by the location.hash property. So just like the example we just looked at, and it tells us that to solve the lab, we need to deliver an exploit to the victim that calls the print function in the browser. So there's a solution here if we get stuck, I'm gonna click access the lab and that will create a new instance that we can go and try to exploit. So we get through to the main page of the website. We have this blog with various posts on it. And we also have this exploit server, which we need to go and actually provide the exploit to. So once we get things working locally, i.e. once we're able to perform the XSS on ourselves, we'll try to create a payload for the victim. And then we have this option to deliver the exploit to the victim. What I typically do is start off by just trying to review the general functionality of the web page. So we might go and have a look at the source code and just go through, see if there's any interesting links, any interesting scripts. Go and view one of the posts, for example. And if we do that, we'll actually see we've got some comments. We've got a comment form. So you might try to enter some things in here. We might try to do some payloads. So we could do something like we just saw with a image source and you know have it set to X and then have a on error equals alert zero, something like that. You could try and put that in every thing that allows. It's not going to allow for some things. For example, we've got the email, although. It's always worth checking because this might just be a client side validation. So it might be that you can intercept the request with burp and then set that to be an XSS payload as well. Presumably the same thing is going to happen with a website. It does as well. So we'll set that to HTTP test and that submits the comment. We can go back to the blog. We can see if our comment has been left. It has it didn't trigger any XSS and we could also have a look here in burp suite as well to see whether anything interesting happened. Maybe we send this to the repeater and go and play around with the values. But this is a little bit of a detour. The challenge description told us that there was a vulnerability on the home page. So if we have a look at our source code again, we'll see that there was actually a script towards the bottom with this window on hash change function. We know that that was the goal of the challenge anyway. So we could have also done F12 we go into our inspector and search for hash change. Bearing in mind, it'll probably come up a few times because of the title. And in fact, it's not on the post page. I'm still on the post page here. Let's go back to the home page. Let's check that again. And this time we have the script down towards the bottom. We could also go into our debugger into the index. And again, we can just go down to the bottom. Now we've got it with some nice syntax highlighting. And we can also set up some breakpoints here if we want. So this code looks quite similar to what we had been looking at. Let me, let's take a copy of this and let's go and give it to GPT. Let's say, explain please. Let's see if it's able to give us a good analysis of the short snippet of code. It's taken its time, so let's do it ourselves. So it's very similar to what we have in that example. So we've got this hash change function. It's listening for the hash change, and then it's going to create this variable post, which is going to use the selector query, the jQuery selector, and it's going to look for a H2 tag. So a heading two tag in the section blog list for 
whatever is contained in that location dot hash dot slice one. Uh, it's decoding that as well. So we could go and verify what this looks like. Let's take a copy of this. Um, once it's done that, by the way, yeah, it's going to grab that string. It's going to have a look, see if it's on this page somewhere as a H2 heading. And if it is, i.e. if the post was found, if it returned a successful post, then it's going to scroll into view. So we can go into our console. We can search here. We don't have anything because we don't actually have a hash up here. So let's do hash and let's do test. We do that and we get an error because it didn't find the heading test on the page. But if we now run that again, you'll see that it comes up test. So that's good. Let's go and have a look and see what H tags we've got. So here's our H2 tags. We've got one called perseverance. So let's take a copy of that. Let's paste that in instead of test. And you'll see it jump straight down to perseverance. Again, we could set up a breakpoint if we wanted to debug this. In this case, it was probably not too much to debug, but in other DOM-based XSS challenges, you might need to step through. As was mentioned in the intro section, you sometimes just have to see if variables are being assigned. You'll need to trace that as you go and see where your input is gonna end up. So in this example, our source is the location.hash, which is where we're able to insert some string or some payload, which is going to end up in the sync. And the sync in this case is this jQuery selector. So let's jump back over to ChatGPT and see what it told us. It's given us some explanation. I'm going to say, is there a vul vulnerability? While it's slowly answering that, let's take a look at what it said. So it said that this JavaScript code uses the jQuery library to attach an event listener to the hash change event in the window object. When the hash change event is triggered, the function runs. So right so far, the function uses jQuery to select a HTML element with the class blog list and the child h2 element that contains the text of the current window locations hash, i.e. the part of the URL after the hash symbol. The hash is passed through the decode URI component to properly handle any URL encoded characters. If the selected element exists, the code uses .get0 method to get the first DOM element and scroll into view and makes it visible by scrolling the page. So that seems perfect to me. I can't see that it's got anything wrong. It's described exactly what the functionality of this code is. We asked it if it's a vulnerability. It took a long time. Normally it types out as it's going, but in this case, it just seemed to spit it out after a minute or so. Um, and it tells us that it's not possible to determine if there's a vulnerability in the snippet without knowing more context. So they need to know more about whether the attacker can provide data into that source, I guess, and how it's passed to the sync. But it does say there are some potential security concerns, for example, the cross-site scripting attack. If the decode URI component function is not properly sanitizing user input, an attacker could potentially inject malicious scripts into the hash. That's true. And injection attacks. Okay, it just told us the exact same thing twice with a different title. Um, that's fine. Okay, it's important to validate and sanitize user input before using it in code. It is also important to keep the libraries and frameworks used updated. Okay, all good advice. This is quite a simple case, so there's not really too much. If we start asking it to give us a, an example payload, you'll probably find this is where ChatGPT starts to fail us. Okay, let's go back and solve the challenge. And I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna go and put in a payload here. So let's do the image source equals X. So it's not gonna find that image and it's gonna trigger this error and we'll say on error, we want you to alert the documents dot domain. Close that off, we hit enter and we get back the domain as this pop-up. So that's great, we've triggered that off. We don't want to do that in this case, we want to call print and we can try that. It's basically gonna come up to say, do you want to print this page? And that's what we need to do on the victim system. So here's the problem. We can't just pass them this URL. If we could just pass them this URL and we know they're going to click on it, then that's going to trigger that. But in this case, the victim isn't clicking on any links. We have no indication that they will click the link. We want to try and make sure this triggers automatically. You may also be wondering why did this even trigger? Because the whole 
point of the code was to look for one of these H1, or sorry, H2 tags and scroll down to it. And in this case, there wasn't a image source X on error print. So why did it trigger? Well, essentially the selector in jQuery looks for a looks for whatever you provide on the page, so whatever value you've given it to look for, to select. And if it can't find it, then it will attempt to add it to the DOM. So the example that we looked at told us how we can get around this, which was by using this iframe, we can set the source to be the vulnerable website. Let's take a copy of that. Let me go back to the challenge page. Let's paste this in here and let's just take out this image source. Take that out and we'll paste that in here. And that looks good, I think. Let's try that out. There we go. So it automatically triggered that, although that's what it did for us anyway. So that's probably not a great example. Let's go ahead and let me take a copy of this then. We'll go and put this onto our exploit server. We'll paste this in here. And I believe the only reason we need to do this is because of the updated jQuery. Because if you remember the example that we looked at told us that jQuery had patched it to stop this from automatically being triggered. But yeah, we'll take our vulnerable website out of this and we'll put in our lab ID. So I'm gonna take a copy of this. We'll paste this in. So whenever the victim, we're gonna deliver this exploit to the victim and whenever the victim opens this up, an iframe is gonna be paid, created. So this website, this domain will be loaded within the iframe. And then once it's loaded, it's going to call this JavaScript, which is going to say, set the source to be equal to the current value plus image source equals one on error equals alert, which is great. We just need this to be something different. So we actually want it to print. You might want it to steal a cookie or something like that. It's a common goal. Uh, let's try that. Let's try and deliver the exploit to the victim. And there we get, congratulations, you solved the lab. And that's how we can solve that DOM XSS challenge. I've put a link to this GitHub write-up. So each of these videos that I put forward will come with a write-up as well, where you can basically just go and copy and paste anything you need to. And then any sources that I've used for making the video or for solving the challenge, or just good sources regarding the vulnerability type, I'll leave those in the resources section as well. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks. Bye.